Hey, Richard Bryce here. In this video, I'm gonna help you to improve your two-hander by working on one of the most important elements, and that is your footwork and your movement to the ball. I know it's not glamorous, I know it's not sexy, but it is the reality. Unless you can get to the ball, you cannot hit it. Unless you get there early and get set up in the right position, your chances of executing the shot go down dramatically. So it's something you can and should be working on. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some simple ways to do that. So I hope you enjoy it, I hope you find it helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay, the footwork is gonna be really important. You have gotta to get to the ball, you gotta get set up in the right position. So we're gonna look at that and we're gonna work on a few different components. We're not gonna to focus too much on the split step because I've talked about that a lot. Hopefully you know that you're gonna be landing wide, you're gonna be landing low, you're gonna be on the balls of your feet, you're gonna to be towards the inside of your feet, and hopefully you know that you're gonna be landing just after your opponent makes contact. I'll place a link down below that breaks this down in more detail, but they're the nuts and bolts of it. What we're gonna focus on is the movement to the ball and then the contact footwork because We've also got recovery steps, but we're not gonna worry about that in this video. We're just gonna worry about all the stuff that gets us into the right position. So we've done our split step. Hopefully you already know about the unit turn. I'll place a link down in the description for that if you're not too familiar with working on your unit turn because you will need to understand what this is about. But as you turn your upper body, your unit, you're gonna be doing something with this leg. So as a right-hander, I'm gonna be doing something with my left leg. It's gonna be pivoting. So this is a really important part of the footwork that as you start to rotate your upper body, you'll pivot with this leg. Now we've basically got three options of what can happen here. I can pivot and it can stay where it is. I can pivot and step out, or I can pivot and the foot can come back underneath me. So we're gonna be using them at different times. If the ball is gonna be right in front of me, I will just pivot where I am and I will step in and I will hit with a neutral stance. If the ball is hit really hard at me, I might just pivot where I am and hit with an open stance. So potentially I might just be doing this pivot step and not moving very far. If I need to move over a little bit, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be stepping out. So if the ball is fairly close, I'll step out and then I'll be shuffling and then from there I can step into it or I can step out and then hit that from an open stance. If the ball is further away still, I'll be pulling my foot underneath so the ball of my foot lands underneath my hip and my shin is like that. And the reason I'm doing that is so that now I can drive across and cover as much ground as I can. So if the ball is further away, this pivot, instead of being there, because trying to accelerate you know, if you look at my shin, it's pointing that way. That's not gonna help me accelerate in that direction. It's gonna slow me down and increase the likelihood that I injure my hamstring. So I need to get my foot underneath so then I can push across. Now, what can be deceiving when you watch the pros play, they're gonna be driving off this leg at the same time. So as I drive off that leg, it might give the illusion that I'm stepping out but I'm actually pulling my foot underneath my hip and driving back like that. But you want to practice it so you can step across. So we've got the split step and then we've got that first pivot step that goes along with the unit turn, either staying where it is if it's close, stepping out if we've got a small amount of distance to cover, or stepping back or a drop step if we've got more distance to cover. You've just got to practice it over and over again. The next thing that we're going to be looking at is the movement to the ball, and I've kind of just covered it there. So the way I try and get people to think about this is we've got court coverage steps and we've got adjustment steps. And the reason I call them that is because if the ball's a long way away, you've got to cover as much ground as you can as quickly as you can. And a court coverage, steps, a court coverage step is basically a crossover step. If I've got further to go, I'm going to be running. So if so, for some reason I'm in that forehand corner, I've got to get all the way to the backhand, there's going to be a few running steps before I get into this. But if I'm coming from the centre of the court, like I'm demonstrating here, I'll be covering that pretty much with one step. You know, if I go right into the centre of the court, I do this, I'm basically loading up on that outside leg, and I'm almost ready to hit, you know, a ball that's at the, the sideline of the court. 
So that's a court coverage step that you just practice from the split step and just get used to doing that movement as you do your unit turn. Adjustment steps are little shuffling steps where we basically lead with the right leg and we follow it, sorry, lead with the left leg and we follow it with the right leg. And that's exactly what I did when I stepped out. So for that ball that's a little bit close, I stepped out and then I just followed it. And it's that little shuffling motion. So if I'm going from here, the ball, it's not right in front of me. So I'm gonna, and now I can hit at that in-between distance. So that's an adjustment step. But sometimes we might need to use those adjustment steps when we're wider. So potentially I have to add it on. So I do that crossover step. I'm not quite far enough. And I just do a little adjustment step to make sure I'm in the right position. So your footwork along a kind of a side when you're, you're traveling along the baseline is made up of these little components of doing the crossover step and the adjustment steps. You know, sometimes I might do a couple more adjustment steps, but generally you're gonna be able to get this done with one adjustment step. So then we've already mentioned briefly that contact footwork or the swing step as I like to call it, because it's what you're gonna do with your feet as you swing the racket. You know, it's really important for staying balanced, but we've got three main options for the two-handed backhand. We've got a neutral stance where you're going to step in. So we'll have pivot, we'll have stepped forwards on that front leg from there. And generally, as you do that, there's one of two things. Just this back foot is going to rotate up, but quite often you'll do that and this back foot will pivot round. So that'll allow you to maintain balance. The second option that we've got is going to be that pivot so that we're our knees, our hips are pointing, our pelvis is pointing that way. We'll rotate, hit through the ball, make contact, and then our pelvis will start to rotate this way and we'll have gone from there to there. So that's the, the kind of open stance. That's the pivot. Obviously, there could be a variation where you're in a semi-open stance. And then we've also got, and you see this a lot in the program, you've got the closed stance. So it doesn't happen on the forehand, but in the program, well, and just on the, the backhand in general, you'll be doing the closed stance where you do still drive off this leg, you step across your body and then swing out. And as you see what's automatically happening with my other leg, you know, as I do that, my other leg is pivoting round and I'm landing there. So when we're moving across the baseline, they're going to be the kind of steps that we work work with. Now I'm also just going to cover briefly what happens when you move forwards. So if I recognize the ball is going to be short, you know, I've potentially I've pivoted that leg, then if I step in, it's too far away. So what I might need to do is a little adjustment step there to make that work. So I'll pivot, adjust, and then hit. If it's even further in front, I'll pivot, crossover step, and then hit. If I need to go a little bit further still, I'll pivot, crossover step, adjustment step, and then hit. So we're starting to build up combinations of movements so you can start to cover the ball in different areas. I won't cover the deep backhand and moving back on this one because it needs, uh, it deserves its own video, so I'll do that. But if you start to practice these combinations and just play around with it and have fun and just wrap it out. So, you know, I'm gonna work on just five of these, just stepping in and kind of pivoting through and following through. Okay, now I'm gonna shuffle out, step in, follow through. Shuffle out, step in, follow through. This time I'm gonna shuffle out, hit from a pivot and come back. Shuffle out, hit from that pivot and come back. Then I'm gonna work on, okay, I'm gonna do that crossover step and now I'm gonna pivot. Well, this time I'm gonna do that crossover step, a shuffle step and then pivot. And you just start to, to build up an arsenal of these footwork pans that you've programmed into your body. And I cannot emphasize enough but if you do this and you just build them into your system, make them automated without the ball, then when the ball's coming, it's way more likely to happen. Because if you've never done this stuff without the ball, the chances of you kind of perfectly doing it when the ball's there, by chance, it's not gonna happen. So you wanna work on this stuff. But there's something that I need to mention that goes along with this. 
and that is that the better you can predict and the sooner you can predict where the ball is going, the more efficient you can be with your footwork and the better position that you can set up in. And a lot of that is going to come down to how your visual system is functioning. And unfortunately, the reality is that a lot of adult tennis players, the visual system lets them down on this front. They don't realize it because it's not something they've thought about before and they can function in everyday life. They can drive, they can work on the computer, they can do whatever. But the visual requirements in tennis are very, very hard. So a lot of people can't process quickly enough. They can't judge distance and depth accurately enough and it prevents them from using this optimal footwork. So what I've done for you, because you can actually train this stuff, is something that I had to do with my game and it made a massive difference. And that's why I teach it to people because it was literally game changing for me. So I've created a masterclass that's gonna explain about it, talk about vision training, talk about how vision works about the eye muscles and that kind of thing and it's going to show you a few different assessments because you know we can test this stuff and we can figure out whether in fact your visual system is part of what's preventing you from doing certain things on court so those assessments are in there as well so if this is something that sounds interesting to you then uh, go ahead check it out place a link down in the description and i'll place a link up there otherwise get out there start working on this stuff program this footwork in it's going to make a massive difference on your two-hander